Hello. <lacht> All right. Hello, good morning. So happy to see you all. So I want to start with one question just to wake everyone up. So I'm interested, who of you already knew as a kid that they were wanted to work in IT? That's actually impressive. Well, that's not me, <laughs> but um, super impressive. Um, so is that working? Ah, oh, yes. So I actually thought um, sharing a personal story would make a good first talk because nobody can say, boo, you're wrong. <laughs> um, but actually sharing a personal story makes you really vulnerable. Um, maybe more than you want to, especially if you're talking in front of a, a lot of people that you don't know. <laughs> um, so this talk actually requires me a lot of courage. So why do I do this anyway? Um, I personally really love hearing other people's stories, especially if it's from other women in tech. So I want to share with you today my story, um, <laughs> because I bet most of you can relate to most of the parts, um, but if you can't relate to anything, you'll just learn a new perspective on how it can be starting out in tech. So that's me, I'm Feli, I'm 29 years old, my pronouns are she, her, and I live in Nuremberg, Germany, where I also grew up. I've been working in IT as an iOS developer for around seven years now. Besides coding, I love creating sketch notes at conferences from time to time, and then I share them in the internet. So I already work in IT for some time, but actually, I never wanted to work in IT. <laughs> so let's start at the beginning. So I, th I grew up in a very creative family. Um, as a kid, I loved to play music, to sing and dance and draw. In around eighth grade, I developed an interest in maths and found out that I'm actually quite good at it too. It felt natural to me. There's always this one right answer and um, the path to the result is understandable and logical. I was also super interested in photography because of my grandpa, and I got my first real camera when I was 14. On the slides here, you can see some pictures of me, me as a kid playing the clarinet, me looking at a camera um, on a vacation in Italy. Um, one is a macro photography of a tiny little mayfly, which is like one centimeter large or small, <laughs> and one picture of an oil painting that I created for school. So after my A-levels in 2011, I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so I decided to do a one-year training as camera woman because I thought it would be fun, and luckily my family could provide me with the financial support to do it. I love being creative, and I wanted to learn more about making movies. So here you can see a picture of me with a big smile on my face and doing a peace sign with my hand. Next to me, a quite big movie camera on a tripod that I used to record videos. Sadly, finding a job in this area is really hard, so I decided to study something afterwards. Also because that would give me some more time to really figure out what I wanted to do. I only had one criteria um, for, the, for what I wanted to study, and it was something with media. So I studied media engineering, which was a mix between design, computer science, and engineering. So I learned a bit of everything, but nothing really well. <laughs> um, I was mainly interested in the design part, because I wanted to be creative and artistic. And Actually, one and a half years into my studies, we had to sign up for a six-month-long internship to gain professional um, experience. And I actually got a job as a designer. Wow, I was super excited about that. But actually, only four weeks in, I figured out, like, design is nothing for me, really. Um, so here you can see on the slides, um, one of my projects where I simplified a photograph of my hand, which is secretly holding a little cheat sheet. 
And the illustration was then used at the back of my handbook, uh, of a handbook. Um, so the job was mostly to get some data and make it beautiful. Um, I had no idea how to do that. <laughs> I'm really good in like commenting on designs, like this is bad, this is bad. <laughs> um, but thinking of something on my own, to create something on my own was just really hard. I couldn't kind of come up with something on my own. And also we didn't learn that in university. So since design was not really an option for me anymore, I was asking the same question. What now? <laughs> At one point in my studies, we had to work on a group project together with other students. And my group decided to create an app for iPhones. Swift was the new shiny programming language from Apple that was just released one year ago. And we have heard that it should be easy to learn, so why not? Um, nobody of us had a clue how to do that, but in the end, actually the app kind of worked. But the most important thing was, um, there was actually something I really enjoyed. I wanted to do more like this. So I decided to look for a working student job as a mobile developer. Actually, shortly after, I got my first real job as an iOS developer in an IT consultancy agency in Nuremberg. I was actually pretty surprised <laughs> that this worked out for me so quickly. but. Even months later, I wondered, why have they hired me? I didn't know anything about iOS development, really. <laughs> um, well, spoiler alert, today I know better. Today I know it's more important how motivated you are and how quickly you can learn new things. But during that time, I was constantly thinking they only hired me because I increased the, the number of female developers in the company. <laughs> Because, surprise, there were not a lot of female developers there. In this small, small mobile development team with around five people, I was the only woman. And I was super insecure. Everything was so new to me. So the job itself was actually super fun. I learned a lot. But I was often doubting myself if it would have been better if I had studied computer science, like the real one, not just this half-hearted mix of design, computer science, and engineering. I always felt behind everyone else in terms of knowledge, and there were so many terms I had never heard of before. During the first weeks working there, three other students joined the team. And they were all studying computer science, the real one. And they knew so much more than I did, and they were comfortable talking about all these different programming languages and concepts, which increased my feeling of, damn, I have to learn so much to catch up. On the slides here, you can see a graphic from Liz and Molly from Instagram. By the way, they are amazing. Check them out. So in this graphic, two people are walking on separate stairs towards a goal but the stairs are longer for one person than for the other person. The person who is walking the fewer stairs is already super close to the goal, looking down to the other person and saying, look how far behind they are, they must not be working as hard. Instead of acknowledging the fact that I had a different level of knowledge and be open about it, I constantly wanted to escape these situations because I feared they would find out that hiring me was their worst decision. <laughs> that I just got the job because I was a woman, but that I didn't work as hard that I sh as I should to catch up. Actually, I did not grow up with building my own websites or playing around with hardware. I mean, we had a computer at home, but I only used it to watch my older sister play video games. <laughs> And later I used it to chat with friends. And yes, this was before smartphone times. Um, so I didn't know how a computer worked and that you can actually do more with it. I had like no contact points with IT during my childhood. So do you remember the part where I said I was good in maths? 
Well, actually, I also had a computer science class for two years in school. But I had zero interest in it. I was actually pretty good, but I had zero interest in it. At one point, I actually felt so uncomfortable being there because there were no other girls. And I just wanted to leave. So I switched to the French class, actually, <laughs> and <laughs> because I wanted to be with my best friend. Turns out I was really bad in French, <laughs> and I almost had to repeat the year because of my bad grades. <laughs> I only remember, salut, ça va, je ne sais pas, <laughs> um, which means hello, I'm fine, and I don't know. <laughs> so a year later, in 2016, I successfully finished my studies, and I graduated with a Bachelor of Engineering. I continued working as full-time IRS engineer. So I had my graduation as proof that I can do this, but I still had the feeling that I don't belong. Especially during lunch breaks, when everyone else discussed the latest tech trends, argued about tabs versus spaces, or their favorite open source license, I felt like I was not nerdy enough because I wasn't interested in the same topics as everyone else. I just wanted to eat my lunch and not talk about work. <laughs> I did not know any other developers besides my colleagues, so I thought this is what it should feel like to me too, fun. But it wasn't really. Over the time, I've worked in a lot of different projects and got to know more developers, other code bases, and new technology. This all made me more confident over time because not everything was new to me anymore. And I noticed that things that I have already learned were unknown to others, especially when they were working on other platforms like front-end or back-end. I could actually even share some of my learnings with them so that was awesome. It took me nearly two years to realize that I don't have to talk about tech trends during my lunch breaks and that I should care less about what others might expect from me. Because actually, you're fine just the way you are. Um, I found my own niche where I focused on user experience and accessibility. Especially accessibility is a topic that is so important for creating inclusive products, but it's often an afterthought, and even worse, often it's completely forgotten. I wanted to change this. I finally found something in the IT universe that I was really passionate about, something that not a lot of developers have experience with, and deep inside me I knew this was something worth fighting for. So why is being different actually a good thing? So have you ever heard of the term diverse teams? Of course you have. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> diverse teams don't exist when everyone naturally fits in because they grew up in the same area, they have the same gender, they have similar beliefs, similar experience, similar looks, similar abilities. You get the idea. In a diverse team instead, everyone has different strengths and weaknesses and problems are approached from different perspectives. In the end, this leads to better products. And by better, I mean products that are especially more inclusive. So my learning is, don't try to change just to fit in. Some companies are actually looking for culture add over culture fit. It is actually good to be different. Sadly, not every work environment is a safe space. There's still lots of sexism, unconscious biases, toxic attitudes, and in general, it can just be a tough environment for some people. But it's not only the responsibility of the ones who are affected to change this. It's everybody's job to make the environment a more respectful and safe space. So please raise awareness for potential issues. Stay open-minded too. Educate yourself and people around you. We need everyone's support. For example, I can recommend reading the brilliant book Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez about how a data-based world ignores half of the population. 
believe me, it is mind blowing to learn about all the issues that women have these days. And I, in fact, I didn't know about most of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, diversity is not the only important thing to keep in mind. I think the feeling of belonging is even more important. Do you know the quote, diversity is having a seat at the table, inclusion is having a voice, and belonging is having that voice be heard? Well, I think this is spot on. Here's another graphic from Liz and Molly with a comparison. The left one is showing that if people don't feel like they belong, they only share a very small subset of ideas. And the right one is showing that people who feel like they belong, they share all of their ideas. So you might wonder where to start to create a more inclusive environment. I have a few tips that you can apply actually right away, like from now. <laughs> so the next time you introduce yourself, add a few more words to your introduction. Hey, I'm Feli and my pronouns are she, her. By explicitly expressing your pronouns, you will make it easier for transgender, gender non-binary and gender creative people to also share their pronouns if they use any. Don't assume gender pronouns by just looking at someone's experience, uh, experience appearance. <laughs> um, instead, default to gender neutral pronouns like they, them in English or ask for their pronouns. Be an ally by making everyone's voice in the room heard if needed. Often you work with other people in, the, in a team, so make sure that everyone can have part of the discussion by either making the one person who is constantly talking aware that it would be valuable to hear other people's opinions too or by asking someone specifically to share their opinion. I personally find it very tricky to share my opinion in meetings, especially with very opinion, opinionated, well, that's a weird word, opinionated personalities in the room. Um, so I'm always glad if we pass the mic uh, to someone else once you're finished. So everyone can actually have a chance to say something. Also, don't act surprised when someone doesn't know something you actually thought they knew. Use it as an opportunity uh, to teach. Otherwise, if you're being surprised, like, what, you didn't know that? Um, it could easily happen that the other person gets the feeling of, oops, I should have known that. And the next time, they might not even ask at all. So these are all just a few first steps. You need a bit more if you want real diversity in your workplace. But I think if every team member is doing a small part to create a more welcoming environment, we can slowly change the industry together. So after a few years of working in IT, I was more confident in my work. But I got a bit tired. I was missing ways to apply what I've learned all these years. And some people, honestly, were not really listening to my input. I wanted to have more impact and learn something new. So I was ready for a change and quit my job. If it scares you, you should go for it, right? It's about finding the balance between new challenges and feeling comfortable in what you're doing. So even if it feels intimidating to take on a growth opportunity, go for it. So in summer of 2021, I found a new job working at Spotify as an iOS developer. I'm working on one of the design systems on the main app. The work is focused on building UI that is accessible and easy to use. Part of the job is also to support other developers to create new features. I really love that the job lets me have a greater impact and aligns so well with my skills and passions. So there are a few things that I know now, but I wished I had known earlier in my career. The first one is give other people feedback. Sometimes 
other people's actions can make you feel uncomfortable or excluded. First of all, your feelings are valid. This can happen, like nobody is perfect. By making others aware that their behavior was inappropriate, they actually get a chance to change and do better next time. But honestly, before you consider giving feedback, check in with yourself and keep your own mental and emotional state in mind. And if needed, get support from an ally first. Um, yeah, it might be a shocker, but gender pay gap is still a thing. So it can happen that as a female engineer, you get paid less than your male colleagues with the same experience and who are working on the same things. So if you're legally permitted to talk about income, and if you want to, talk to your colleagues openly about your income and ask for their support. Trust me, I know the start of a conversation about this topic is really tricky, um, but one question can actually open doors for you. Also, um, this was one of my main misconceptions. What is a developer's job really? Can I be a developer? But let me tell you, the job as a developer is diverse too. Find out what you like most, experiment around, stay open-minded, and if you want to, you can totally focus on a very specific area or not and become a full-stack developer. You don't need to know it all from writing scripts, over user experience, machine learning, security, whatever. There's a lot of options. Fight your imposter syndrome with the fact that nobody knows everything. So imposter syndrome is the feeling of self-doubt and incompetence, coupled with the dread of being exposed as a fraud. Um, this is a feeling that almost everybody experiences in their careers. Um, but actually working in IT means learning new things all the time. It's never ending. But, so embrace the fact that you can learn anything. And don't feel ashamed if you don't know everything. My favorite tip is find a community. Because if you find a community where you live your true self and where you feel welcomed, this is the best thing. So search for meetups in your local area, or otherwise, there are virtual ones too. I can recommend the Women Who Code community. I was participating at a virtual meetup last year, and I instantly felt welcomed, even if I don't know anyone. Um, also, most conferences provide sponsored diversity tickets. So if you're part of an underrepresented, underrepresented group in tech and want to go to a conference, consider using these tickets. They exist for a reason. Also, follow more diverse people on social media so you get different perspectives on topics, and especially new perspectives that differ from yours. So it's time for the final summary. First, you deserve a place in tech. Celebrate your differences and embrace diversity. Second, you can learn anything. Don't be afraid of all the stuff that you don't know yet. And third, be an ally. We are all in this together. Stay open-minded, but call out toxic behavior and keep others responsible. So that's it from me, but since every story is unique and special in its own way, I'm curious to hear what's yours. So, merci beaucoup.